It's a great pleasure to have the honor of speaking in this room, uh, the, the library of the Scuola Normale, now, now uh, is uh, the Sala Azzurra. And uh, uh, I, I, maybe I, I am the, the oldest speaker in any case. I mean, many of the speakers knew Riccardo as uh, uh, I would say senior research is an important person. When I met him the first time, I mean, he, he was uh, uh, just a matricula when he arrived here at the school normale. At that time, I was much older than him. And in my talk, I will try to, to recall the beginning of uh, my precision calculations. I did a lot of work with Riccardo. And then, uh, and, and, uh, uh, and then uh, not the conclusion, but I mean, some of the results I obtained. I will try to review also my personal uh, uh, recollection of the evolution of the, how to say, technologies used in the years, in the decades, to evaluate Feynman graphs. And maybe at the very end, I will have uh, some small new result. So, uh, uh, Riccardo arrived at the Scuola Normale in the fall 63. So I discovered that now are 50 years. So we are, it is unclear whether we are celebrating his 70th anniversary or so, which, which is not the case, but we are celebrating the 15th uh, uh, anniversary of his arrival at the Scuola Normale in the fall 63. At that time, I was perfezionando, a great student. <coughs> so, uh, for me, I was very old, but was not su such an important, outstanding uh, event, the arrival of one more matricula in physics. But, uh, and then I remained uh, two years here in the Scuola Normale with him, then I moved to other places. And of course, in, in those years, uh, we, we could meet and become uh, good friends and know each other very well. At that time, uh, Everybody was living inside the school normal, now they're just offices, etc. And so the life was very, very strict. We, we met continuously at lunch and in any occasion. Now, uh, <coughs> that happened in 63, but then in 65 I moved a little bit around with various fellowships and came back to Pisa in 69. And Riccardo, uh, in those six years, uh, had his laurea, his perfezionamento. And as soon as I arrived, he asked me what I was uh, doing and proposed to me to, to collaborate. I said, OK, well, can I do something with you? I said, yes, and with that, that, and that. And so uh, he said, it's fine for me, and he joined. And uh, so I could appreciate his efficiency his capability of work and, uh, since the beginning. I, I don't know how it's now, because uh, now he's uh, the, the senior, the older uh, uh, collaborator, so I don't know whether he keeps working so hard or just asks uh, the, the younger collaborators to do something for him. But, uh, <coughs> he works very hard. Uh, very hard. Uh, Now, uh, what I was doing at that time, I had just started with Goji Mignaco, the evaluation of the slope of the electron uh, charge for factors, which is called F1 prime of zero, at two loop uh, in QED. Uh, there was some improvement in spectroscopy, I don't remember exactly what. And so that number was uh, required. And I had started the evaluation of that quantity. And unfortunately, unfortunately the, the, the path chosen was complicated, just uh, uh, to evaluate the imaginary part of the electromagnetic factors with the arbitrary values of the momentum transfer, and then to reconstruct the value, the physical value F1 prime of zero with the dispersion relation. This is kind of complicated way. Nowadays, one would one would uh, uh, take immediately the, the, the uh, uh, zero momentum limit, etc. But having uh, the imaginary parts, one can try 
to reconstruct the whole four factors, which was done many, many years later with the progress of uh, dilogarism, polylogarism, which came out. Anyhow, here is the result. And uh, uh, one of the advantages of the dispersion approach was that uh, renormalization, etc., was not a problem because I mean, if you evaluate something like that, you divide it square and that uh, protects you from uh, any <coughs> ultraviolet divergence. This was our uh, result, it was an original result, which is still there. And of course, uh, we repeated uh, the official calculation by Peter Van Sommerfield for uh, the, the G-2 at two loops, which is here. And okay, here is the result. Uh, this Z2 is by square over six. Uh, we will see that several times later. Now, uh, how was done the calculation? I was using uh, Schoonskip. Schoonskip was the program written by Tini Weltman at CERN. He had first prepared a version for the IBM. Then CERN moved from IBM to CDC and he immediately wrote a version uh, for the CDC. And when I left CERN in the fall 69, <coughs> Uh, Tini Weltman gave me a, a copy of the binary code, which was just a, a set of punched cards, uh, which I could use in the computer and the CDC, which at the time was in Bologna, in the Casalecchio uh, uh, Computing Center. And so uh, we were preparing the program here in Pisa, and uh, every week or so we had to, to, to drive uh, to, to Casalecchio with the punched cards uh, of our programs, submit the job, and that was very frustrating because you, you, you could leave the, the, the cars and wait, and wait that somebody took the cars and, and the program, print the result, you discover an error, you submit, and that could be repeated two, three times per day and not more, and then uh, we had to, to drive back to Pisa. <coughs> At that time, Ricardo had an office, I think, upstairs here, and uh, I was, uh, we were working in his office, and uh, it was very important to, 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 avoid, uh, to avoid the trivial bugs, because, I mean, nowadays you resubmit the job immediately, but at that time it was more important. And, I mean, I, I always wrote the code. I mean, it's somehow maybe I like it. Ricardo, from that point of view, was not, not particularly flexible. He was... Uh, he, it was good in checking, that's what I must say. Even in checking the most trivial things, I mean, was, uh, work is work, it was done seriously. But the code, I mean, he always left uh, the pleasure of writing the code to me. And I don't know whether he was, uh, you know, just was kind to give me that pleasure or he did not like it at all. But this is something which uh, uh, was not clear to me. I suspect that he, he does not like to, 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 to write progress, but this is something else. Uh, from the point of view of analytic tools, uh, there was just a book which I had found in the uh, CERN library by Lewins, the logarithm and associated functions. And then later on, <coughs> Lewin wrote a second edition in which the title of the logarithm became polylogarithm, so, because there was some improvement. And uh, in that book, there is reference to the original article by Nielsen in Nova Acta Nature Curiosorum of Halle in Germany, and the title of the paper was The Eulersche, the Logarithms and uh, Generalizations. And, uh, I mean, once more, uh, things go back uh, to, to Euler or somebody else, or uh, it's very difficult to find something really new, but... Uh, and uh, much later, I found uh, an article by Raka in Nuovo Cimento uh, having to do with creation of pairs, I suppose, in which Raka introduces the, the Euler, the logarithm, once more. And, uh, and that is also spends five, ten years. Now, uh, uh, we continue the collaboration for several years. I mean, next year, I moved to Bologna, and then uh, we, we met... Uh, telephone calls, and many times we met in Florence, half away, it was the most convenient thing. And uh, uh, from time to time, uh, some uh, younger collaborators like Michele Caffo joined, 
and we wrote, we produced several papers, and for that time it was, I would say, quite a number of papers. Now there's some inflation, not only in cosmology, but also maybe in scientific production. And uh, those papers were quoted uh, Barbieri et al. Of course, I mean, uh, I appreciate very much that, but I mean, you can imagine that to be hidden et al. after a while uh, becomes uh, uh, less enthusiastic. And uh, at the beginning, I. <laughs> you, can, uh, uh, you, can't, you can't win forever. Now, uh, at the beginning, I, I was giving the, 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 I kept the direction, and we remained within a QED, some bound state, some contributions to three loop, uh, G minus two from vacuum polarization, electron loops. But Ricardo, of course, was too attracted by uh, other fields of physics and what's going on uh, in elementary particles. And so he was moving and bringing me to two other, two other fields. And, uh, and in fact, we wrote also several papers on QCDs, like quarconium decays, etc. Now, and I am almost sure that uh, I was, the, I mean, I succeeded in organizing his first talk at CERN. I guess 74, I don't know whether you remember that. I tried to reconstruct it. Correct. <laughs> I remember very well that Marie Kay was in charge of the seminars, but I mean, for the year I, I have summed up. Now, uh, and then Ricardo continued for his way, uh, and uh, our collaboration uh, ended more or less around the 80s, and uh, so Barbieri et al. Uh, et al uh, took another, another meaning. Of, uh, now, uh, I remained in, in uh, working in G minus two, and many, many years later, with other collaborators, especially Stefano Laporta, in 96, uh, we finished the uh, three loop calculation of the electron anomaly, of which I am, of course, very proud that the number is here. And, uh, okay, it involves the usual constants, but by now I think that they are not to everybody, the Riemann zeta function, pi. And also this A4, which is a kind of uh, log two, I mean, depends on, on the power within. And okay, it, 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 I give here the, the numerical value in this strange units because <coughs> the experimental error uh, now of uh, experimental error on the G minus two is in that position just after the decimal digit. So you need uh, some uh, five, six digits here. So, I mean, uh, up to here, it is more or less significant. For the rest, it's, it's a curiosity. What is the, uh, today the situation of the G minus two of the electron? And what is written here is copied by a paper by Kinoshita, Nio, and the collaborators, more or less recent. Uh, the experiment is the Gabriel's Harvard experiment is here. And the error is uh, uh, 0.24 part per billion, so 10 to minus, 10 to minus uh, 2 in 10 to minus 10, maybe. Uh, this is to be compared with a mu anomaly. Now, uh, I need a lot of effort to write a mu anomaly in this somewhat stupid way, but just to show uh, in 10 to minus 12 units and with the error. I mean, the error is 600 against 0.2. So if you take the ratio, the ratio is 2,000. So the precision of the electron is 2,000 better than the precision of the muon. And uh, let me anticipate, uh, uh, the scale for, for uh, uh, non-QAD effects is the ratio of the electron to the muon mass squared, which is 40,000. So 2,000, uh, uh, so the, the, the muon is definitely better than the electron for the sensitivity to, uh, uh, say, high mass states or whatever they are. Now, uh, the theory for, uh, for, for the electron is very complicated because, 
Well, it's not complicated. There are a lot of graphs, and then you, you, you start having uh, electron loops uh, uh, and maybe hadronic contributions and all the rest. So for the electron, you can write uh, <coughs> this kind of expansion uh, where this C12, etc., are uh, say, the simple QED contributions with a single scale, and then there are dots. And for the electron, the dots uh, are uh, small, de uh, mass dependent, smaller, and non contribution essentially. So the real problem, uh, if you want to reach that precision, is to evaluate uh, those numbers uh, to that precision. And here I did the effort. Uh, now, uh, Kinoshita, the Kinoshita group has evaluated numerically the four loop and five loop. Here are the results. And uh, now, uh, this is uh, the value of the constant. And this is the value of alpha over pi squared. So you see what is here I needed. And this is the contribution. Remember, the error is here. And then to the five loop, this is really, uh, I don't know how they, they could succeed in doing that. The coefficient is very, very large. It's nine. Now, all the other numbers of the order of one, now at five loops, you have a nine, which is bigger. And, uh, and of course, five loops are relevant because the error is 28 and the contribution is 60. Okay. So the contribution roughly is twice the experimental error. Uh, now, what can you say? Uh, uh, what, what do you do for, with such a result? Uh, is that a check of something or just a calculation? Well, I mean, the calculation should be checked by an independent calculation, uh, should be repeated essentially. And now, is that a check of QED? Uh, yes and no, because uh, it becomes a prediction if you have alpha, but there is no alpha at the same precision of, of uh, G minus 2. So, <coughs> You can do two, two cases. I mean, uh, you, you can say, OK, from that formula and g minus 2, I can evaluate alpha, and you get the result. And there are many, many errors. And, and the errors, uh, this is the experimental error. And uh, here are the error from uh, the QED, four loops, five loops. And this is the hadronic contributions, because, I mean, uh, uh, I said, uh, they are not relevant. In fact, they are 19 against an error of 28 something, but still they are. And then uh, you can compare the alpha from the G minus 2 with the alpha, which comes from the rest of spectroscopy. It's too complicated to go to the details. OK, here is the number. Uh, more or less, you are uh, within the error, but the G minus 2 is more precise than spectroscopy. Because spectroscopy gives you, with very, very high precision, gives you the Rydberg constant. I mean, what about uh, uh, G minus 2 of the muon? Uh, I repeat here, il, I repeat here the results. This is the, the latest. Uh, now, now I change 10 to minus 11. There's no point in keeping 10 to minus 12. Uh, the, the theory uncertainty are, are due to uh, vacuum polarization, light, light, uh, uh, adronic, I mean, the adronic uncertainty is here, this is the, the weak. And now you, you might say, if you subtract that there is a discrepancy, a three sigma, almost a three sigma discrepancy, but uh, yeah, I, I'm a little bit skeptical on that because, uh, well, of course, you can always say that's very better data. But <coughs> before saying that it is evidence for new physics, my impression is that the light light hadronic contribution might be underestimated. And there is no theory, I mean, there is nothing like uh, equivalent to QAD for uh, the hadronic contribution. To, to the G minus 2, I mean, the very contribution means you have uh, three photons out of my shell. I mean, and, uh, and there is no, no sa safe model to, to predict uh, something like that. And now, what can you say? You know, this is the most conservative point of view. It's written here. I mean, all the effects due to large intermediate masses scale as the square of the masses. So the, the effect is much bigger in the muon than in the electron. At worst, when you have the best, 
suppose you can improve the number by something, and uh, you keep discussing whether it gives new physics or not, but in any case, uh, you, you can take this difference, scale it by iteration masses, and add <coughs> to, to the G minus 2 of the electron. So provides kind of some rule for the corrections, for the hadronic corrections to, to the electron G minus 2. <coughs> Sorry? In this moment, yeah, alpha is, yeah, but no, not, for, not for the muon anomaly. If you, if you ask, uh, is QED correct, which is the level of uh, QED, etc., today one would need uh, another alpha. And I don't know how to find it, but that's another problem. Now, uh, there's another, another open problem in, in precision physics, which is the charge radius of the proton. Uh, the proton, I mean, has a finite size, etc., and uh, gives a shift in, in, in an atom, which is written here, with the wave function at the origin. And uh, you know that the radius scales with the mass, well, the other way, so uh, the muon proton, uh, uh, the mu sits, uh, I mean, the effect is much stronger than hydrogen, and in fact, at Psi, there is a, a recent result, they have measured, uh, I mean, uh, they extracted this value for the proton radius. Uh, and the rest of physics, which is essentially uh, uh, hydrogen spectroscopy, gives uh, 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 this value written here. Uh, and I tried again <laughs> with the trick of scaling to the same uh, unit. Uh, and, uh, and the difference is really large, because if you take the difference uh, and you divide by 500, which is here, you are left with, uh, I don't know, seven or, or uh, a, a, I mean, a really a lot, a lot of, uh, of uh, sigmas. If you take, if you divide the difference by the small error, it's infinite. So there's a discrepancy. And experimental discrepancy, or maybe there is some small, small bug <coughs> in the bound state theory. I suspect that maybe there's something in, in uh, uh, bound state theory, but uh, I'm not, not able to, to, to support, to pinpoint, uh, to, to an explicit uh, place. Now, uh, how much time? Uh, so let, let, let me go maybe a little faster. What happened on the side of technology for evaluating Feynman graphs? Now, uh, Half a century ago, we had Pauli Villar for uh, ultraviolet divergences, a, a photon mass lambda for the infrared divergences. A, a, we are doing uh, calculations in four dimensions. Uh, introducing a new mass is, is really is the wrong thing to do, because uh, even if this mass is small, it gives a lot, a lot of complications. And of course, you must do a machinery of added subtracting the suitable quantities, but this is not trivial. And uh, historically, I think there's a paper by uh, a Feynman uh, which makes a mistake just uh, taking the lambda zero limit of psi integral too quickly, so this is uh, uh, known to, to, to be difficult. In 72, something happened, the uh, world changed. Uh, continuous dimensional regularization. That was done by many people, also Cicuta in Italy and Milano, and I think Bollini, Gian Biagi in Argentina. But of course, uh, it's a very month because they introduced it, they used it, and they used it for renormalizing uh, engaged theories and all the rest. And I had uh, the honor, the pleasure of receiving uh, a copy, a reprint of the paper by Tini Weltman with the comment, why don't you for once read the paper? Because he thought that I was not a good reader. I was I mean, an average uh, level worker, but not a good reader. And I must say that I, I, I did not read the paper. But maybe I read uh, <laughs> But, but uh, uh, now, uh, I, 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 I had some doubt, because in continuous dimensional realization, it's very clear, because you take few dimensions, d less than 4, and you regularize ultraviolet divergences, then you go with d to 4, and you have poles in d minus 4, and you are happy. You take d 
larger than four, regularize, regularize infinite divergences, get poles in D minus four. And so with the same D, you regularize at the same time ultraviolet infinite divergences, you get poles one D minus four. You have the same D, which is both smaller and greater than four. For a long while, I mean, uh, I was uh, too conservative, short-sighted to, to accept this. Of course, you can have arguments a little more complicated going uh, out my shell, etc. But I was a little bit uh, not confident. So I did not accept continuous dimensions too quickly. <coughs> Ten years later, Chetir Genkachov <coughs> E introduce the integration by parts identities. So if all integrals converge, integration by parts become kind of trivial. And well, then you take a Feynman graph, you take all the integrals associated to it, which means all possible numerator, all possible powers of the denominator, so an infinity, an infinity of an infinity of integrals, and then you play with integration by parts you get something is zero, so you get a combination of those integrals uh, are zero, which means one of them is equal to the others. And you can, uh, or if you put some order in those identities, it's called by now Laporte algorithm, you can express this infinity of integrals in terms of a few master integrals, and that's what is done. And at the end of our calculation of Gemma Sunstein loop, we did some reverse engineering, and Laporta expressed all the calculations done in the, in the previous 20, 30 years in terms of uh, master integrals. There were just 18 master integrals, so that, that was uh, very impressive. And in fact, uh, a few years later, mainly of a team of uh, Rittberg in, in, in Karlsruhe obtained the three loop value of one prime of zero. Uh, with one more master integral. So the, having the algebra of the projection master integral, you could obtain at the same time almost one integral was missing f1 prime mod zero. And so I, I finally was convinced that master integrals were an important thing. Now, uh, here is kind of a trick. It's absolutely trivial, but sometimes it is better if you have a definite integral to to differentiate the integral with respect to some parameter and then to reconstruct. Now the idea is that if you know that the integral is a log, its derivative is a fraction. So some log might be, at any rate, having in mind that uh, taking a derivative might help, it was absolutely trivial to take uh, master integrals, take the derivative of master integral, express everything as master integrals, and find that the master integrals obey a, a system of uh, first order differential equations. <coughs> and uh, differential equations uh, are uh, identical in the dimension D, uh, but you are interested in D equal four, you can expand, you have uh, okay, chain the equations so and so forth. Uh, you use uh, once more uh, Euler, the, the uh, Euler-Lagrange approach of uh, a variation constant method, so we have to solve the homogeneous equation. It happens that in many, many cases, the homogeneous equation is almost, almost trivial, and then by repeated integration, etc., you can find a solution that's very fast. And uh, I understand that, that uh, nowadays there are <coughs> new techniques that are coming out to make that reconstruction algebraically all is more and more powerful. Uh, in, in any case, I mean, we had the Euler dilogarithm, then the polylogarithm by, by Nielsen, and you have to generalize little more still harmonic polylogarithms, and so that was kind of trivial. <coughs> it is a graph, which is the two loops arise, in which the trick of the uh, uh, polylogarithm does not work. Thank you does not work. It is more complicated. If you, if you try to, to do something, you, you, you see that, that there is inside something of the kind of an elliptic integral or whatever. And from my point of view, an elliptic integral is something which does not satisfy a first order differential equation, but the second order differential equation in some essential way, so to speak. Uh, 
Now, the Bronze Arise in the Arbit Aimer's case, <coughs> uh, there are four master integrals. If you want to reduce to a single equation, you get a fourth order uh, equation, which is too complicated. But if you go to d equal to, to two dimensions, uh, you discover that you can. Oh, grazie. Right. As you can, yes, you find a second order differential equations in D equal to. Uh, is that an accident, a miracle? Uh, we know that D equal to is very special. Well, yes and no. This is uh, playing with uh, epsilon. This is the, the, the uh, Levi-Civita tensor. You, you see me that you form this polynomial. Now what? Uh, you can look at this polynomial which was written in three dimensions here, because this is an epsilon with, with three indexes, as a polynomial in d dimensions. Now, that polynomial in d dimensions vanishes when d equal to, because uh, it involves three vectors, so there can't be three vectors independent. And then you consider <coughs> those integrals in which you put the polynomial in the numerator, and uh, this is sunrise, and divide by the denominator of the sunrise. So this quantity is zero and equal to. Uh, so you get extra identities, and uh, that justifies uh, why in equal to there is a simplification. But the interesting point uh, is uh, uh, that uh, you can uh, expand uh, the system of equations for this analysis not around equal four, but around equal to. And, <coughs> and it, uh, those zeros give you I mean, uh, the algebra is complicated, but it gives you a block structure, so you can solve a system of four equations, <coughs> essentially, as a, a system of just two equations, and then the rest comes not really for free, but much easier. And then, of course, uh, you say, yeah, I don't care about the equal two, I want the equal four, and there are the uh, uh, tunnels of shifting relations, which allow you to go back and forth from d equal 2 to d equal 4. And this seems to me very powerful because it applies not only to sunrise, it applies to all graphs in which you have at least three vectors, which means a lot of graphs. And maybe that's very new, for me it's very new, but uh, I should check that the bibliography, there was this paper of Challen in the 50s in which he observes uh, <coughs> something which happens just in d equal 2. Now to conclude, the latest, uh, uh, I said that somebody should review the calculation of C4, the for loop quantity by Kinoshita. And in fact, Stefano Laporta is doing that. And I must say, he has no, no, no official support. Uh, he, he sits at his place in Bologna and he has access to the computer center of Zurich University. But now, uh, he. He, he deals with the uh, for loop uh, G minus 2 of the electron. He has expressed uh, the, the, all the contribution in terms, uh, maybe a few million terms, I don't know, just three master integrals. And now he has a method for evaluating those master integrals in arbitrary precision, which means, uh, I mean, uh, as many digits as you like, but something like 1,200 seems to be a standard in this kind of calculations. And then what is amusing, uh, and then when you have a number with so many digits, uh, uh, there is the PSLQ algorithm of Ferguson, which means also programs available in, in, uh, in internet. And you, you, you ship that the number, and it returns you the interpretation of the number. Let, let me show. So Laporta gave me, this, this is a subgraph, you see it's four loops, a subgraph of some G minus two graph. And uh, this is a normalization constant. It is uh, expanded in, in D minus four powers. It has a fourth order pole. And by some reason, which is complicated, you need not only the finite term, but also uh, uh, some expansion in D minus four because the graphs can enter in some combination. It's really, uh, so the first coefficient, the fourth order pole, is, uh, is written here, and of course everybody understands this one over eight. The second coefficient is written here, there are many three, 
but uh, with some effort, I think, in, 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 in the middle school, uh, you, you learn how to reconstruct it. Uh, now comes... Uh, this is... Uh, here are just 600 digits, <laughs> because the 1,020 digits did not enter in, in the transparency. So if you send this number, please don't forget, don't miss not even a single digit, so this PSLQ, uh, they return that this is... Uh, this uh, pi squared i6 minus zeta 3 divided 2. And uh, this is now true or false or, or whatever. I mean, uh, when something is true uh, with 1,000 digits and you check 200 is more, uh, so maybe it's not a, a mathematically, logically exhausting proof, but I mean, uh, and. Uh, uh, well, you, you see, when you do those calculations, uh, you, I mean, at the very end, you need just a single number, but, but you want to check those numbers. So if you have such a result, you can discuss with somebody, yeah, you were wrong, you wrote pi squared divided by five, or pi squared divided by six. But you say, yeah, the number, well, so <laughs> it's much more difficult to, to pinpoint where an error might be if you give just a, uh, but this is essentially the end of my talk, because I, mean, I have a few more such expressions. <laughs> uh, extremely complicated. I think this is the last, so I finish here. And uh, I wish to recall again many, many years uh, of uh, active uh, research and work here at Pisa School Normale with all his friends, uh, collaborators, and students. Best wishes. <laughs> Thank you, Ettore. Are there any questions for Ettore? Yes. So I, I have kind of a historical question. So in, in the fourth volume of Lando Lifshitz, there is a, a remark that it makes no sense to compute a third order contribution to G minus two because there is a hadronic contribution that we don't know. But, and, but today we know, I mean, yeah, they yeah, are so, written so, so, yes. I was, so of course, yeah, I have enormous respect for that book as a Russian, but clearly here, London students were, were wrong. I, I, wrong. One, one that was published the, in 67, the first edition. So I was wondering, when uh, was it understood that actually that attitude, that attitude was wrong and we should try to combine experiment and try to get the most out of I'm not able to answer. I think that this was written, uh, I don't know, in, in the years, uh, uh, in the 50s, there was the idea that uh, field, maybe field theory was useless because it worked only for QED and not for strong interactions. I, mean, I remember that when I was graduating, I remember that, that kind of proposals, that uh, after all, field theory was irrelevant because strong interaction requires something else. This is I mean, the, the, the actual contribution, not, not just a no-go theorem, yes? At the time of Adonia. Yeah, uh, uh, well, before, I mean... Uh, yeah, yeah, in the preparation, scientific uh, preparation. Uh, in the famous paper on uh, physics of E plus C minus physics, I think they demanded... The, B, that, the Bible of E plus C minus uh, for Adonia. If you measure the cross-section, this is the... <laughs> so maybe this is the answer to your philological question. But so my, my. No, I, I said very shortly that for the, for vacuum polarization it's okay, and, uh, and uh, but for light light we need uh, we need uh, some new gatto Kabibo <laughs> collaboration of some kind, somebody to come. Uh, I have nothing to say. I mean, uh, the process is complicated. Uh, uh, you have to build a model. A model is a model. It's not a fundamental theory which can be disproven. So this is... Uh,
But I, I confess my, my ignorance then. And I, I'm retired also, so... so I, <laughs> Ettore, uh, uh, you know, I find it useful to make an aside remark, which I think is important. Since you, you showed the experimental numbers, right? Yes. The, in particular for the G minus 2 of the electron. Uh, now, the, the, it's, a, it's a result of the last um, few months that the people, I forgot the name of the main person, but the people in Harvard that did the, the most precise measurement of the G minus 2 of the electron now, Yes, you may Gabriel, say yes, thanks. He is uh, one of the authors of the uh, uh, new uh, remarkable result on the electron, uh, on the EDM of the electron, of the electric dipole moment, right, which after more than 10 years, right, uh, has improved the limit by an order of magnitude. And it's the same people that, uh, you know, John... I, I mean... I remember Gabriel told me once that it was the previous experiment was <coughs> by the melt. And Gabriel told me that he was the, the, the man of the penning trap. The penning trap is, is uh, the, the, I don't know what it is, in which you keep the electron before measuring it. Uh, I'm not surprised that uh, controlling the technique of keeping one electron in prison that, for, for a while. A, that, that they use a, a molecule, uh, thorium oxide, right? And, uh, and um, they get a, a limit which is now 10 to the minus 28 E times centimeters. So we, we, we all agree that uh, uh, calculation of light, light by light amplitude is, uh, is, uh, is very uncertain. But uh, I was surprised to see that you are hinting that that could explain uh, the discrepancy with the experiment. I mean, in order to explain the discrepancy, it should just be off by, by, by a very, very large factor. No, 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 no. No, 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 you, you jump from 12 to 16, something like that. Unfortunately, I didn't check the numbers, but... Now, uh, as we are <laughs> talking about Ricardo, in, in the preparation for the Daphne uh, machine, for, for the, uh, we, we wrote a very, very short note in which we showed that, that you, you, you could invent a model, no, absolutely no, 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 how to say, deep foundation for it, if you try to fit the vacuum polarization contributions with quarks, uh, with, with a, some kind of effective mass, whatever that means. And they use that mass for the light light. And the Laporte, again, gave me uh, a kind of uh, tabulated values of the light light contributions as a function of, of the mass uh, uh, loop. You, you get, uh, I don't remember the number, but say, something or say 20 against 12, which is uh, the... the Maybe the contribution now is eight, uh, and we had the 12. I, I, I don't remember, but it, it's, it's less than a factor two. It is, it is the issue. Yes, 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 thanks. I remember that, yes. You are not that far. No, no, it's, it's, a, it's within a factor two from the accepted value. So I'm not claiming that, that that's the correct value, not at all. I, 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 uh, I mean, many people have worked on, on, on that issue, so uh, it's true, one has to be careful. And perhaps uh, uh, the, er the current error, as it is quoted now, is defendable. But uh, I share the view of Ettore that, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, the fact, for example, that there is going to be a new experiment may not be that significant in view of that problem. I, I have shown my transparency of the use of uh, delta. Uh, yeah, the, the use in any, in any case. I, mean, I, I understand that for people doing uh, G minus 2 of the muon, trying uh, to find new physics just to have a small <laughs> correction to the electron anomaly is a little bit deceiving. But in any case, uh, I would say that this remains.
it's, it's lunch time, so it's, uh, 